No matter what it's made of, nothing escapes the hands of time. Although it's pretty hypnotic to see the effects of the days, months, and years on a variety of everyday objects. So, following on from parts 1 and 2 of this series, let's take a look at even more amazing examples showcasing the incredible and inevitable power of time. Your money goes through a lot, from being in your wallet or purse, to being scrunched up down the back of the couch. It's no wonder, then, that if you compare a stack of 500 brand new uncirculated dollar bills to 500 circulated ones, the effect that time has had on them is easy to spot. Dirt and grime has dulled their color, and they've been rumpled and crumpled so much that the stack looks a lot fatter. And little do these new bills on the left know that that'll be them in a few years' time. Computer keyboards are something most people use on a daily basis, but we don't hit all the buttons equally. I mean, you're less likely to use the Q or the Z compared to an A or an E, right? Well, this means the buttons can wear down unevenly over time, like this. Wow, this guy's deleted so much of his work, he's deleted the backspace button itself. The W, A, S, and D keys are also worn beyond recognition, something all the PC gamers watching will understand. Now, this is a Razer Lycosa keyboard, which was released back in 2008, and with this pic posted in 2020, this could be a photo of up to 12 years of avid typing and gaming. But it doesn't take that long to wear down the buttons on other keyboards, if this image is anything to go by. According to the poster, the keys on this laptop were worn down after just 20 months of gaming. Man, this guy really needs to go outside. While time can wear things down, it can also see things thrive. Growing slowly over decades, sometimes centuries, trees adapt to their ever-changing environments by growing over and around obstacles in their path. This is called edifoecotropism, and while most items are engulfed, like this key which was swallowed up in just 10 months, other obstacles are a little harder to tackle. As a tree grows thicker, it'll sprout more roots to support its weight, but what happens if the ground around the tree has been converted into pavement, like this? Well, because most roots instinctively grow down, they work their way into the crevices developing along the cracks and burying down into the earth along the lines of least resistance. And depending on the pattern of the blocks, the roots can grow into some incredible shapes in order to reach the earth below. In the immortal words of Jeff Goldblum, Life, uh, finds a way. Now, roots don't just fight their environments above the surface. Underground, most roots will naturally grow towards water, which is a process called hydrotropism. But if they encounter a pipe carrying a steady stream of water underground, they may try to enter it via a join. It's not an issue at first, but over time, huge tangles of roots can block up pipes entirely, and I mean entirely. These roots have been growing for so long, they've filled every available inch of this pipe and molded to its shape. What's even more incredible is that depending on the type of root, they can fill up an entire pipe like this in less than a year. Yikes. Who would you call to deal with a blockage like this, a plumber or a gardener? Over in Hawaii, the warm weather and above-average humidity throughout the year is perfect for all kinds of plants, allowing them to grow fast. Maybe a little too fast if this image is anything to go by. It's unclear how long the car has been here, but it's been long enough for creeping vines to completely overrun it. It's either that or this car is just sporting some killer camouflage. But you know what nature hasn't managed to reclaim yet? Those like and subscribe buttons down below, be sure to hit them up. And if you have a photo or video of the power of time that you want to appear in part 4 of this series, send it on over to me at stories at bmaze.com. I can't wait to see what you've got. Now right, what's next? Now as a tree grows from a sapling, the taller it gets, the thicker the trunk needs to be to support its increasing weight and height. Every year during the peak growing season, large cells multiply rapidly within the tree, increasing its girth and length with a light-colored wood. Then, towards the end of this period, growth slows down, creating smaller cells with thick walls that leave dark rings. This annual cycle means the trunks and branches of most trees 
build up in concentric circles like this, but when it's cut down, it retains the interior structure. So you can tell how old the tree is by the number of circles inside it. And that's not all. If the core of a tree is turned into a post like this one, the outer layers of the wood can rot away gradually over time, revealing the shape of the original sapling underneath. That's pretty cool. Or if you're artist Giuseppe Pannone, you can spend years painstakingly chiseling and shaving away each ring of the tree to reveal the once sapling hidden underneath. To think such a huge tree sprouted from such a thin core. Isn't nature incredible? While some signs of time are obvious, others need you to take a closer look, like in this image. Do you see it? Yeah, those aren't just cobblestones. It's actually a rug outside a cafe in Tallinn, Estonia, which has been laid out on the cobblestones for so long it's been stepped on and pressed into every last groove. It's so dirty you can barely tell where the rug ends and the cobblestones begin. Is it just me or does anyone else really want to peel this up? Now, city planners and designers usually put paths in areas they think will enhance residents' experience, like picturesque walks through parks and green spaces. However, people tend to prefer the path of least resistance, if this path in Russia is anything to go by. Years of people marching over this mound has gradually worn the grass away to present a more efficient route across this, uh, let's be honest, useless circle path. All over the world, people are too keen to cut corners off their journey, even if it only saves them a few seconds in the long run. So if there are any aspiring park designers out there, remember, people prefer efficiency over aesthetics. Speaking of parks, did you ever play on teeter-totters when you were a kid? Man, I alone must have spent hours going up and down on them with my friends. Although, this one looks like it's seen years of fun. Thousands of tiny feet pushing off from the floor have gradually worn two huge holes right through the rubber matting into the asphalt underneath. Either that or it marks the spot where your mom sat down one time. You know the saying, before you judge a man, walk a mile in his shoes. Well, I want to judge this man because if I walked a mile in his shoes, I think they'd wear right through. Countless steps have worn an almost perfect indentation of this man's feet into the very sole of his shoes you can see where all his toes go. According to him, they're about five years old, but most of the wear is down to his love of Pokemon Go, which has seen him walking all over the place to catch the digital critters. Ah, now that makes sense. Now, seeing how much walking that guy was doing, I wonder if the old set of hiking poles on the left here belong to him. These poles are used by hikers to get better purchase on unstable terrain. According to the photographer that took this picture, the poles on the left have seen 1,000 miles worth of hiking compared to the ones on the right, which are brand new. A few more miles and these things would be closer to chopsticks than hiking poles. Not every effect of time is as visible as you might think. For example, on the surface, this boat looks like it could be brand new, with its clean sides and prow, but when lifted out of the water, it was a whole different story. This little boat has fallen to fouling, which is where plant life, mussels, barnacles, and slime start to thrive on the bottom of boats left in the water for extended periods of time. These slow the boat down and can damage the hull to the point where the boat is unsailable. Special anti-fouling paint can be used to prevent this, but it looks like this guy might have missed that boat. Do you have an item of clothing that you wear all the time? Maybe a coat that you've had for years or a pair of jeans that just won't quit? Well, this next guy, he had a set of work boots that he'd worn so often over four years, they were beyond recognition compared to a brand new pair. These are steel-capped boots, heavy-duty footwear designed to protect the wearer's feet from just about anything. Clearly, from the huge patches of damage at the toe there, these boots did their job well. No wonder he bought a second pair. Now, those boots probably ventured into the men's room many times, so they likely contributed to the floor wear like this. <laughs> Guys will know exactly what this means, but let me break it down for the ladies. There's an unwritten bro code for using urinals. Never use the urinal next to one that's already occupied, unless all the others are taken and you're desperate, or are just a straight-up psychopath. 
That means that the wear on this floor is testament to the many years that men using these urinals have stayed true to the bro code. Puts your faith back in humanity, doesn't it? There's something about items worn down to a perfect fit that's weirdly satisfying. Do you know what I mean? Well, take a look at this hook lock. Do you get it now? Apparently, for more than 10 years, the hook of this lock has worn the brick it rests on down. Every time the door was opened and closed, the hook would wear a little bit more of the brick away until it had its own perfectly formed channel to sit in. That sounds oddly satisfying, but I actually have my doubts. It looks more like the channel has been purposefully carved into the brick, which is why the gap is so long compared to the hook. Uh, what do you think? Is this the power of time or an artificial fix? Let me know down in the comments. Wow, you've been watching this video for a while now. Though, not as long as whoever was watching this TV. This is an old CRT screen that was once a security camera monitor, which, despite the images you can see on the screen, has been turned off. This is known as screen burn-in, or ghost image, caused by long-term use of a specific, non-uniform pattern of screen pixels, causing permanent discoloration. Guess these security guards were always watching, even when the monitor was off. Are you a superstitious person? Do you knock on wood or touch something for luck? Well, you're not the only one, if this statue in St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City is anything to go by. The beautiful bronze statue is of St. Peter himself, the first pope in history, which was created some 800 years ago. It's customary for pilgrims visiting the church to touch or kiss St. Peter's feet, and with millions of people visiting over the years, St. Peter's feet have been worn down by centuries of kisses. Now, that's quite sweet, but I hope the polished parts of this statue haven't been worn down by people's lips. This is one of many sculptures dotted along Puerto Vallarta boardwalk in Mexico. Like St. Peter's, these are made of bronze, which is an alloy mix of copper and tin. Being exposed to the outside elements has caused the copper in the mix to oxidize, so the statues develop a layer of green copper oxide. Although this has been gradually worn away by people sitting on it or touching its, uh, lady lumps. But it's not the only inappropriate statue touching going on. Over in New York, Wall Street's famous Charging Bull statue has people lining up to take photos with it. But not from the front, from behind. Apparently, nothing says I love New York like touching a pair of big bronze bull balls. So much so that since it was installed in 1989, They've been rubbed and cradled by so many tourists that they're now the shiniest part of the entire animal. And I thought you were meant to grab the bull by the horns. You were probably told that tattoos are permanent. So you should really think hard before getting something like a potential ex's name needled into your body. Ooh, lucky Brenda. But while tattoos are permanent, they don't stay the same forever. As this guy found out eight years after he got this tattoo. Now, tattoo ink typically doesn't go further than one millimeter into the skin, but as the tattoo heals and the skin regenerates over the years, the ink can be carried into adjacent areas, blurring and fading smaller details. Though time alone isn't the only thing responsible for tattoos aging like this, ultraviolet light exposure from sunlight can dull the vibrancy of ink colors, making relatively new tattoos look more like your granddaddy's weathered navy tat. So remember kids, wear your sunblock and keep your tats out of the sun if you want to keep them looking fresh. Oh, I think I just turned into my mother for a second there. As you get older, you might notice a new gray hair or wrinkle every now and again. But because the human aging process happens over decades, you don't always clock the changes time has on your body. That is, until you compare yourself to someone much younger like this. Over the years, the outer layer of skin on the older hand has thinned, and the number of pigment-containing cells have reduced, so its color has faded. That's left the skin on this hand looking thinner and almost translucent. You can see all the veins underneath. Now, the shape of the hands and nails here are quite similar, so this is probably a grandparent and grandchild comparing hands. Aww. Either that or it's just one person who didn't know that you were supposed to put hand cream on both your hands. Even as we age, it takes more than time to stop us being beautiful. Don't believe me? 
and just look at Sally here, as photographed as part of the Age Map series by Bobby Neal Adams. This series takes old photos of a person and then replaces part of that image with their older face to see just how they've grown. On the right here, Sally is just 14 years old, but on the left, she's 62. And while her hair is now white and she has a few wrinkles, she's still got the incredibly classic poise and grace she did when she was 14. So if you need proof that age is only a number, here it is. Now, it's not just humans that change as they get older. Dogs, especially those in the later years of their life, start showing their age in a few ways that are surprisingly similar to humans. They get a bit slower, they're not as energetic, and as you can see by this delightful doggo's progression, they even go gray. Yep, over the course of 10 years, the dark spots over this good girl's eyes, snout, and ears have gradually faded. Just like humans, as dogs get older, the pigment cells in their skin responsible for color stop being produced. This causes the hair to come out at a lighter shade, like gray or white. Well, no matter the color, I can tell you this wonderful woofer was a friend till the very end. You've probably seen or used an access keypad at least once in your life. These button pads require a specific code to gain entry to whatever door they're attached to. Now, if a pad contains 10 numbers ranging from 0 to 9 and needs a combination of 4 to get in, then there's at least 10,000 possible combinations. Sounds impossible to crack, right? Now, the only problem is that if the code isn't changed, then over time, this inevitably happens. Well, that narrows it down. 3, 4, 9. I mean, there's still a couple of combinations it could be, but... When you see the numbers of the building perched right on top, it's pretty clear what the code is. <sighs> Maybe for security purposes, we should stick to good old locks and keys. Common locks usually rely on a key that has a clear-cut set of teeth. When it's put into the lock, the teeth push up a series of spring-loaded pins, which align with a specific point, releasing the lock's cylinder so the key turner can gain entry. But over the years, both keys and locks can succumb to the wear and tear of time, if this garage key is anything to go by. Over 30 years, the constant use of this key has worn the teeth down to their nubs, but apparently it still works. If that's true, I bet you could probably open this guy's garage with a popsicle stick. But that's not the only kind of key that can be worn down over the years. Of the 88 keys found on a full-sized piano, 52 are white and 36 are black, though on this one, a couple are also brown from years of wear. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know anything about pianos, but several people online have commented that the wear of certain keys over others indicates that this piano has been used to play a specific set of songs over and over. So, it might have belonged to a church and been used to play hymns? Uh, can you think of any other reasons why these specific keys have ended up being so worn? Let me know down in the comments. While we contemplate that musical mystery, here's one with the culprit still in shot. This man may look like he's just wrapping his fingers on his truck door, but that's the hand of a man who knows how to slap a bass if I ever saw one. He's absentmindedly tapped away on that exact same spot so many times that he's worn the paint off his truck. Talk about playing till your fingers are red raw. Now we're heading outside, to the Angels Hike Landing in Utah to be precise. One of the most dangerous hiking trails in the US. Years of erosion has worn this path into a series of incredibly steep peaks, with sheer drops of over 1,000 feet on either side. But despite the danger, hikers regularly attempt the trail, which has been aided by a series of chains along the walkways. And over the years, the chains have gradually worn against the rock, carving new grooves of their own into the outcrops. I guess you could say these hikers really left their mark. Over in Ireland, a green veil has also seen curious walkers leave their mark, but in a very different way. This is Donnelly's Hollow, home of a stone monument that marks the spot where the great bare-knuckle boxing legend Dan Donnelly fought Englishman George Cooper in 1815. After he won, he walked out of the arena and was followed up to the top of the hollow by the crowd. Since then, it's become a ritual for visitors to follow in his footsteps. 
Over 200 years later, this tradition has left a series of about 45 perfectly shaped footprints winding up the side of the hollow, worn deep into the ground. Pretty amazing to think that more than 200 years after the Irish boxer beat the stuffing out of an Englishman, people are clearly still following in his footsteps. But Donnelly's not the only one leaving tracks. Over in New Mexico, a detached portion of the Bandelier Monument called San Cawi holds an even older story. Built by Pueblo Indians, archaeological evidence indicates that San Cawi may have been constructed as early as the 15th century. They carved all manner of incredible things into the rock, from homes and cave dwellings to tracks cutting up and over the steepest part of the settlement. Just look how deeply those tracks have been hewn into the rock. This trail must have been used thousands of times over hundreds of years, wearing it away little by little to create an all-natural set of stairs. Now that's what you call rock climbing. Sometimes, time can wear something down to the point where it's barely recognizable, just like this. Now, I won't lie, at first glance, I thought this was a really burned loaf of bread or some kind of fossilized turd, but uh, can you tell what it is? Maybe that lining underneath gives it away? Unbelievably, this is a whiteboard eraser. You can even see where most people have gripped it right in the middle. Looks like this class learned a lot. Getting the right shade of paint can be tricky which is why a lot of professional painters carry a big stick to do the mixing with. But over time, the paint builds up, and when it's stripped back, an old painting stick can end up looking something like this. At first, I thought this was a cross-section of some sort of tree, but it looks more like this painter's clients are just really fond of beige and brown. Now, it's unclear how long this buildup took, but a similar situation in a sign shop saw these layers of paint built up on an angle iron over a phenomenal 15 years. Just look at all the individual layers. Now, chunks of old automotive paint layered like this can be smoothed and shaped to expose different layers and colors, which can then be used in things like jewelry. In this state, it's called Fordite, and while it isn't any sort of precious gemstone, it certainly looks like it could be. Not bad for a few layers of old paint. Back in 1971, the United States of America declared war not on another country or even another person, but on drugs. In trying to reduce the illegal drug trade across America, public messages and signs were posted all over the country. But more than 50 years on, some features of these signs have faded, leaving hilariously unintentional messages in their wake. Well, I know which way I'm going. Okay, clearly the red marking up most of the sign has faded faster than the ominously black drugs lettering. And this is because red pigments absorb more high-energy ultraviolet light than blue or green pigments. This is pretty destructive, which means on signs exposed to sunlight, red areas fade faster than others. Oh, good to know. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got I've to follow this sign. Which of these amazing displays of sheer power of time did you find the most fascinating? And do you have any stories yourself? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.